when you pray to the Lord, it's a very special power, and I've seen God mightily using it. Now, in my life, it's just so amazing how God is so merciful to me, a wretched sinner, actually. And through this power of prayer, it is amazing how I've seen the Lord mightily work. And one of them has to do, in this prayer, we're going to talk about the adversaries that attack you, the enemies. So then, in your life, you're going to have personal enemies, and Satan's going to raise them up. And they can include saved believers. Let me repeat that again. These can include saved believers, actually. So, so then Satan, what he's going to do is that he's going to influence some people who you would think are saved believers in Christ, and they will turn against you. So remember, enemies are not just what we're thinking, the liberal world system, the elites and all that. No, it can, you'd be surprised that more of the enemies is within so this pastor has been attacked by enemies online. And these people uh, profess themselves to be saved believers, and I'll take it for granted. But these people, they have attacked our channel. They hate, uh, some of them hate dispensational truth. Others hate our church of people gathering so that we can encourage each other and serve the Lord. And the Lord has severely judged these people. And some of these people, they attack dispensational salvation. And what is strange, and only a few people know this, be, uh, that, that, I know, uh, that are in my church, that are close with me, but you've seen throughout the past four years how the Lord crazy answered prayers when the enemies attacked us. And this is what I do when I pray concerning my enemies. These people get very fleshly, and they want God to attack the enemies, but this is what you need to do with these steps. If you don't do this, then the Lord's going to put the attack on you. One example is there's this guy who uh, attacked the name of our YouTube channel, Real Bible Believers. And then this guy, when he did that, he like pronounced a prayer or like the Lord's power, a curse upon his enemies. Very next day, the Lord judged him. Where uh, YouTube actually got rid of the video and he even get, got kicked out of Patreon of all things. How can you do that, right? It's really, really weird. But then, uh, that's why you can't do that when you pray for your enemies. The enemy, you, the greatest enemy you have to look at is yourself. Amen. That's important. Not them, you. So what does this pastor do? If he receives an opposition, I seriously do this. I seriously look at myself. I say, okay, Lord, is there something that I'm wrong at that I need to repent of? And you need to show me from the word. So then that's what I do when I pray to the Lord. That way, why? Even if I'm right, I can attack rightly and properly. Not with hatred, not with fleshly vengeance. Because what did Romans 12 say? Look at Romans chapter 12, how we should treat our enemies. It shouldn't be some, a fleshly impulse of vengeance and anger. It's got to be like this way. Verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. Well, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's what God says. So how we should treat our enemies is that we should treat them with goodness. So you know what I do? I, I mention this in my prayer. I mention concerning... Uh, in my prayer on my enemies, Lord, shed your goodness on them. Why? You want God to bless the wicked ones? No, the goodness based off of Romans 2. Romans 2 says when God blesses that wicked sinner more, then uh, if he doesn't repent, his wrath increases more. Romans chapter 2. Not, don't show him goodness based on his ministry. I don't want the Lord to bless a heretical ministry. I want the Lord to bless his life where he, he can repent according to Romans chapter 2. Amen. So that's how I word it as. Look at Matthew 5. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. So the greatest enemy is yourself. You have to humble yourself, see what you're wrong at, and then you have to show goodness toward them. Verse 44, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. How about that? That's how we should treat the enemies. So one thing I would like to ask you is this. Is there love in there? 
That's something you have to ask yourself. It's very easy to get intimidated and angry, but then who's the enemy right here? You, the flesh. There's got to be love in here where I don't want that person burned in hell for eternity. I want that person to repent. I want that person to get right with God and get saved. Now, here's another thing where it gets off balance. Some people get so off balance that they keep getting pressured and they live like a pacifist. And by living as a pacifist, they try to just keep showing love and goodness towards somebody attacking them. No, you got to take a stance. And not only that, you got to pray for the Lord to, uh, to ruin their work and their ministry, to make, them, uh, to make sure that he destroys, yes, I mean this, that he destroys their life if they don't repent. Wait a minute, I thought you said we're not supposed to pray that. Ah, see, this is the thing where people get off balance over here, all right? Here's the thing, is that when you're praying for the Lord to deal or to attack the enemies, there has to be this one as well. And if you're this one but you don't have this, then don't blame God that when these enemies get more bold against you. That's why I take a stand. I do take a stand. I do take a stand, but this is also holding me back, which makes me in a more balanced perspective on handling the enemy. Do you see that? Do you see that here? Because God is 100% love, but also what? 100% wrath as well. See, so these characters are purely 100%, not 50-50, not 75-25. See, both have to come together. So then, what I do is, when I pray, Lord, have them repent. I mean, do, this is how I pray. It's a simple prayer. Do whatever it takes, Lord, where their ministry will not attack your work and your name, whether you show them goodness or whether you foil their lives or their ministry. See, then that's not fleshly because I leave it in God's will and God's hands on how he handles them. So you have to pray that. You know what's funny? It's always less than one season, which is strange for me. Less than one season. Or within the same year. That the Lord always answers my prayer. And that should scare them. I think, you know what these enemies are? Some of them who are saved people. Oh, I'm just going through trial and persecution. Now look, I understand that. Even I do that. Everyone goes through hardship. And we can't assume every hardship in life is automatically the Lord's judging you. No, but I'll tell you what, it is weird that after I pray, then the very next day, YouTube gets rid of your channel. Yeah. It is very strange that when I pray, that the Lord automatically within the same week gives you a second strike on your channel. Yep, uh, these, uh, there's this one individual who hates dispensationalism, attacked the Bible school that I attended, and then didn't put, my, uh, didn't put my name as a title because the person, I don't know, but per perhaps a person would know that my videos would pop up or they would watch my videos. I don't know. Or maybe he doesn't think I'm worth it. Okay, I don't care. I don't think he's worth it either. So, but the point is over here is that this person, when he, he did the attack, all of a sudden YouTube gave a second strike within less than days after praying. There's one thing where you can't make every coincidence God's hand, but there's another thing where you can't say everything is just a coincidence. It just happens. Right. Who knows? I'll tell you who knows if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you study the book. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit and then you study the Bible and you know right doctrine, see? Everyone I know professes that they hold the truth of the Bible, but... Uh, do, do they really? You have to study it. You have to compare. You have to look at, I mean, look at the videos that I point out, the verses. Don't just accuse me just because some opponent, opponent put like five second video clips where it looked like heresy. You need to look at the actual video and look at the scriptures and see how it's done. You need to study. Study means not just picking one video. You need to go through it. Amen. You need to go through it endlessly and research. When you do that, then you know. That's how you know. But God doesn't give that assurance of knowing to people who refuse to do that. That's why a lot of people live confused. They're like wondering, who's the bad guy? Who's the good guy? The enemies are also confused where they're like, uh, no, uh, Kim is wrong for saying that. You know why? Because you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you're not studying the book. And if you think that I'm wrong, then question number one, did you do this? 
Did you repent of this? Then you know if you're fleshly or filled with the Spirit. Look, God is not a uh, wicked God. If you come to him honestly and sincerely and pray to him, what are you scared about? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. He's a great God. He'll take care of you. It's not like enemies are going to laugh at you, ha, 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 when you prayed and there's damage done. No, the Lord protects his children. Amen. Thank God every time. I deserve to burn in hell, and I deserve to be ruined out of my ministry so many times because I'm not the best person either. I'm just a wicked sinner saved by the grace of God. But God is such a great father that he'll take care of you. But because of your arrogant pride, you develop a cultish mentality. And then when people oppose you, then you get all, then you start to be controlling over them. And some people even look like you. They name and they uh, imitate after you. And then th this is something cultish and scary, especially when you're a ch when your movement is less than 15 churches or 20 churches around the whole world. You think 100% truth revolves around that? No, that's a cult. That's weird. Do we believe that Bible believers are small? Yes, but trust me, there are billions of souls going to hell and deceived, and God's not just going to use less than uh, 20 to 15 churches who didn't even reach every part of the world. Bible believers, our crowd, we're incredibly small, but you will see them all around the world, spreading all around the world. And I'm talking about leaders, ministry leaders, not just... Uh, normal people who just watch online and then they become trolls and they're not properly fed and spiritually functioned and growing. So there are passages that they will use, for example, at the book of Galatians. Paul mentioned that he wished that they were cut off. That's strong language. He also mentioned Galatians 1. He let them be accursed to give the wrong gospel. Paul also mentioned, uh, he mentioned some other points. Oh yeah, 1 Corinthians 5 he mentions, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you to Satan. If you look at 1 Timothy, if I recall, chapter 1, Paul mentioned the specific names who he turned over to the devil. So see, this attack is necessary over here. But then, see, the point is, where is your spirit prioritizing? I'll tell you what, God, before he does judgment, he gives grace. Didn't you know that? So I wonder if you do that or you just get upset because uh, the Lord blessed our channel and then uh, you think that we stole your followers. No, it's because you teach something wrong. Amen. So maybe that's the reason why. So then you get all indignant and then you, you go in the flesh and then you start attacking us. Some guy made a documentary attacking us and within less than a th uh, couple days after his hero pastor got a second strike, this guy who made the documentary against us got a second strike too. It's just, uh, I mean, these people, they don't fear the Lord, man. That's scary. Oh, no, no, you don't fear the Lord, Gene. I fear the Lord. I do this. All right. Anyways, let's all smile. God loves you. Let's all smile, and God loves you. What we've got to understand is look at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27. You know, Jesus, he preached judgment to the Pharisees. You know that? He says, you are twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Didn't you know that? He also said that God will judge them severely. How can he escape the damnation of hell? Serpents, generations of vipers. He even whipped them out of the marketplace. Very hateful, right? Ah, but even though he proclaimed judgment, look what he prayed first, because this is what he prioritized. He prioritized giving them a chance, giving them grace, because of human nature. Everyone's human nature. You got to realize we fall, we all live in sin and are deceived. So we have to give grace at the beginning. We have to give them a chance. And then when the grace doesn't last long, then what? Then God sends out his judgment. The greatest evidence is the church age. It's an age of grace. God lets them blaspheme his name. God lets them persecute his children. But 2,000, over 2,000 years is more than enough time. And then his wrath is going to fall severely. So that's how it should be done. I mean, is that how you do it? That's how you live? Makes you think, right? So look at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew, uh, excuse me, uh, not Matthew 27. We're going to look at Luke 23. Pardon me, Luke 23. And then I want your other hand to go to Acts chapter 7. But uh, it might be too fast for you, but I'll just repeat it again. Acts 7, Luke 23. Acts 7, Luke 23. For time's sake, I'm going to read it now, okay? So Luke chapter 
23, the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned this. If you look at Luke chapter 23, Jesus Christ said at verse 28, but Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but what? Weep for yourselves and for your children. Why? Because of verse 29 and 30, judgment. See that? The Lord Jesus Christ had compassion on them, even though he realized that there's severe judgment for them. Even though there's severe judgment for them. So Jesus had compassion on these people. What's one of the greatest statements that Jesus ever said when uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the people who criticized him, who mocked him. One of the greatest statements that Jesus said is verse 34. Then said Jesus, what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you pray that? I'll tell you what, I pray that. I pray, Lord, will you please forgive them for their iniquity? Amen. Have them repent. Lord's not willing that any should perish. See, he doesn't compromise perish, judgment, 100% hell. But that's not what he prefers. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should what? Come to repentance. That's the key that we know if you're fleshly or not. Do you want them to repent? That's all I want. All I want is repentance. Whether it's destruction, whether it's goodness, I don't care. I just want them to repent and not blaspheme God's name, his work anymore. Now, look, Acts chapter 7, Stephen, he ripped up the Pharisees and then he blasted at them. But you know what Stephen did after his hard railing message? He mentioned this at Acts chapter 7. And then verse uh, 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge when they stoned him to death. This pastor here, I'm sure that some people may find me, uh, may find me very upsetting, especially when I do hard preaching, especially when I kick false preaching, uh, false preachers and wrong doctrine. But I'm like Stephen here. I do that uncompromisingly, but that doesn't take away my passion and love for them. All these false prophets I kick, I really mean that. I want the Lord to give them mercy, to Amen. forgive them. But I want them in the way where they don't glorify and revel in sin more. I want them to repent. That's the key. Amen. So then what is it done? You'll notice that when you pray concerning the enemies, Paul did it according to the name of Jesus. Not only that, you also have to pray concerning God's glory. Moses did that. Paul, when he casted out the person from the church to the devil, he was considering about the name of Jesus. When you use that name of Jesus improperly against the enemies, no wonder the Lord just turns it back on you. You better be careful with that name. It's a precious holy name. So if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and truth, and then your heart is right with God in these areas, then you know what? Do it according to his name. Do it according to his name. Especially when you beseech correction and do it in his name, he'll fix you. So you don't have to fear about if I'm doing something wrong. Amen. And then the second thing is, so we saw Paul's passage, 1 Corinthians 5. He does it in the name of Jesus. And then if you look at Numbers chapter 14, if I recall, Moses, he does it for the glory of God. He says, think about the enemies, Lord what they would think in Egypt when you wipe out your people. Think of your glory, Lord. That's what I do. I think, think of your glory, not Gene Kim's name, Lord, but your name because dispensational truth is necessary. King James Bible is necessary. People coming to church is so important where we can raise each other up and glorify you more. Uh, can I get a witness to that? Is that what happened? Didn't we have an awesome fellowship uh, at Saturday? See, church is important. I stress that so much. Lord, because of that, for your glory, where we can glorify you more, and because for your name's sake, Lord, please do something with these enemies. And when I pray it, the Lord just answers like that. Be careful. Be careful when you attack this ministry because this is not my ministry. Right. This is not Gene Kim. Right. This is the work of the Lord. Amen. And that puts fear in my heart too because, man, I still make imperfections. I still make imperfections online. But, man, I come to him fear and trembling. That's what God wants. That way I can keep trying, at least keep trying to do and teach what's right. Amen. I mean, one person, uh, there's, there's this, there's some of these people who don't have such fear. So then one person attacked me about exceptions and dispensationalism, did a video, and then the guy didn't uh, do any video for months, for months. And so many people were worried, like, I'm, were, did something bad happen to you and stuff like that? 
I was so worried. I wonder if the Lord's dealing with that person on something. And then his partner in crime, so to speak, was attacking, was trolling literally every Bible believer he can think of. And then within less than a season after I prayed for that person, God struck that person with cancer. And coincidentally, that same year, he had a video title. Romans 10, 13 is a cancer. Same year. Watch out. This is, we have to take this work of the Lord, and this includes your pastor here. We have to take this work seriously. Let's pray. God, my Father, uh, this is your work and your ministry. And Father God, I'm not saying that I'm better than my enemies or any people in this room. All I am is flesh, dust, and ashes. I don't know why you would keep using me. And thank you so much. Please keep filling me with the Spirit. Please keep using me for your mercy and grace. Because your word promised that your grace is greater than all of our sins. And because this is your work, Lord, not mine. Your name is so important. What a mighty testimony that in San Francisco, Bay Area, Silicon Valley, that Bible-believing truth is taught, uncompromisingly attacking what is wrong, uh, wrong doctrine, wrong error, people who cause the church to broke down and water down in apostasy, but also trying to promote the right spirit, loving one another and uh, tearing down pride, exalting humility where we exalt your name even more, where we shout and run around the room to glorify your name and where we preach hard and we preach also positive things where we can repent and get right and most of all see souls saved. But more important than that, to glorify your name because your name is worthy. Please protect us, Lord, because... Uh, the enemies are out there. Please protect us, Father. For your work's sake, Heavenly Father, protect us, continually handle them as you've always done. And Lord, I come before you in faith, trusting that whatever happens, whether the enemies attack us more severely or whether your work continues to thrive or whatever happens, I trust all in your hands, knowing that however way you deal with me is best. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.